So, um, who are you? I'm Andrew Forstoffel. Should I look at you? You just look at me. Okay. Um, and I'm about a month away from finishing walking across the country. Where'd you, where'd you start? I uh, started October 14th in Chad's Ford, just south of Philly. Went Philly. south to get away from the cold and just to experience the deep south. Um, as far as New Orleans and then northwest again, back this way. And so we are right now in Las Vegas. We're in Las Vegas. We're in Vegas. Um, and it is August 6th. August 6th, all day? August 6th, yeah. Now, uh, about how much ground do you cover in a given period of time? Um, so at the beginning of the walk, it was about 15 miles a day. I had a really heavy backpack, and I I was, like, fit, but not walking 15 to 20 miles a day, every day fit. You know, so it was, like, 15, maybe 20 miles a day. And these days, it's, it's kind of, like, bounced up to 30. Anywhere between 20 and 35. Now, you're talking about at this point, you're crossing desert. Yeah. Now, which way are you going to go for it? So you're ending in San Francisco. Ending in San Francisco. And which way are you, because there's a couple of routes you can take yeah. from here. Which one are you going to do? So, yeah, because I want to finish in San Francisco, um, Yosemite is kind of perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be taking 95 up to Beatty, Nevada. Does that put you through Death Valley? Unfortunately so, yeah. Um, I could go another route, like further, stay in Nevada for a while and then cross in, but um, but actually the route through Death Valley has the, the the highest frequency of towns. Okay, so you actually will have towns and stuff yeah, along so the way. Yeah, so I, I won't, it, it'll be hotter, but I'll be walking at night. I started that a couple weeks ago, and uh, there, I, I'll net, there'll be maybe one time where I won't finish in a town, so I'll always be able to have water and Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing, really. You know, right. hydration. Yeah. So. And I'm assuming you've got uh, cell phones and connectivity. Yeah. Like you're not out in the middle of wilderness without any sort of connectivity. To, no, to I, I do have a cell phone. Like I said in your talk, really, it's not a smartphone, um, so I don't have like GPS. But I have, yeah, it's more than more. But than it's enough. got a way for so it's still a signal that if somebody could track you exactly. if they needed. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. You. And I'm on. Not roads. that this is like the Jewish mother and me, like, <laughs> do we have a way of finding you? Are you going to be safe? What are you going to eat? Well, at this point, yeah. I'm very blessed and, and lucky to have many, many mothers all across <laughs> the United States, <laughs> east of here, you know, and now in San Francisco. <laughs> so, so let's talk a little bit about why. Why you're doing this? Yeah, you get out of school, and yep. you know some people decide they're going to take time off, to find themselves, or yeah. take time off and go, you know, fart around in Europe or yeah. whatever. But you're you're doing something that means a lot to you. Yeah, and it is about, um, and that's one thing I want to talk with you about eventually. It, it is about finding myself. You know, that's of course really cliched, but it's it's a it's a beautiful search for anybody, and we're all trying to do it in our own different ways. And I think one thing I've realized as I've been going is that's kind of the ultimate task we all have, no matter what our job is. I mean, and relationships we have, good work we're, we're trying to do, you know, that's all important. But when it comes down to it, when you remove all those things, like, I'm, just, what, what am I, you know, what am I doing here? How do I want to be here? So that's, that's, that's been a lot of what this has been about. And another thing I've realized as I've been going is in focusing it around other people's stories. Um, I didn't have the language for this at the beginning, but I think what I was kind of gravitating to was just trying to glean some, a little bit of something from everybody in, in order to more fully understand me and this, you know, so. What have you learned so far? A lot of things, yeah. Um, boy, one thing, I, one thing the, the walking has taught me is, um, is patience. <laughs> One thing, the the constant, the constant kind of walking into the unknown and into a town where I don't know anybody, or just a situation where I've, I'm unsure of what the what the end is going to be, is just not worry. So I, I think I'm a lot calmer these days. You know, having seen that stuff works out oftentimes way better than you ever would have imagined. Like, here we are, above the city of Vegas, you know. Um, so, yeah, and I've, another, one thing people have taught me is, I think, is that so long as I'm curious and, and mo mostly curious, op open and respectful, um, and maybe vulnerable myself, 
they're they're interested, you know. And then and a pretty amazing connection can happen in a very short amount of time. And that for me is what it's all about. Now you strike me as a young man who is, you know, educated. You have the luxury of getting out of school and having some time to do something of this nature. This yeah. puts us in the category of people. We know we live a life of privilege. You know, some of us were blessed with some a little bit more privilege than others. Absolutely. So on this journey that you've taken, yeah. my guess is that you've crossed paths with people whose lives are decidedly other than yours. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talk a little bit about what kind of interactions you've had in cases like that, where people mm -hmm. might look at you and think, mm -hmm. "Who the hell is this kid? Yeah. You know, how can he possibly understand my story?" Mm -hmm. um, my own privilege has been something that's been front and center of my consciousness on this walk. You know, I've, um, it's been, I've had virtually zero negative interactions with people, you know, uh, maybe, maybe one or two minor things as a, as a walker, you know, um, and I can't help but wonder, so it's been like very redeeming, you know, seeing the goodness in humanity, but how would that be different if I were not white? How would that be different if I were openly gay? You know, um, how would that be different if I were a woman, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I mean, that's, and that's something I want to, I don't talk about it a whole lot on the blog sometimes, but that's been, in, in thinking about what my message is, which is basically everyone has a story. It's like everyone is a human being. Everyone just like, let's be open-minded and listen to each other and, and appreciate each other. It's like a message of, of love, really. And so... I look forward to kind of talking a little bit more about that, hopefully somehow after. Um, but yeah, interacting with people who come from a totally different experience than I do has been amazing. Because one, one cool thing walking across the country does for you is it makes you an anomaly. So you, you know, where- You're doing you, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas before I might've been boxed in by, you know, Sam, Sam in rural Alabama where there are, you know, five white people and 50 square miles. And so maybe I'd be boxed into a certain category and, you know, our little societal rules wouldn't allow me to interact with, with black people or something like in a, in a barbershop. Here's this, here's a good example. I was, I was pulling into just outside of Selma, Alabama and got a, came into a little rundown gas station and they gave me permission to camp out back. And, uh, so I was going out back to camp out, and I passed a barber, a black barber shop with like 15 dudes in there, hanging out, getting their hair cut. Um, and that, so there, I, I, you know, I could either go out back or I could just, or I could jump in there and see what happens, you know. And were I not doing what I'm doing, I would have felt much less comfortable going in there, and it may not have been cool, you know. But I went in there, and it, and the whole place just went silent. You know, this like, you know, I walk like in Like, you must be in the wrong place, boy. Exactly, yeah. And But but also, I've got this big backpack with an earth flag, <laughs> an American flag, and like a sign that says, walking to listen. And uh, I'm like, hey, like, can I camp out out back? Like, <laughs> <laughs> just you ask, you know, the, the can I camp out is just the conversation started, you know. Yeah. They said, yeah, sure. So they took me out back and... Uh, and then I came back and we, we, we chatted for like half an hour, you know, 45 minutes. Um, and it was, it was amazing. Um, and <laughs> another side note to this story is, how you doing? good, how are you? One of the best quotations of the walk came from that moment. I was like, uh, I said, yeah, I walked here from Philadelphia. You walked here from Philadelphia, ain't no way. And then one guy goes, he a walking motherfucker, man. <laughs> that was awesome. It's hot. Yeah. You guys gotta get in. Breaking a sweat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's been a, a delight walking through Navajo Nation. You know, um, where I'd heard. They don't. All they don't. They they don't necessarily. You know, the the stories that you hear. They don't necessarily cotton to folks walking on the reservation without. Yeah. Invitation or some yeah, sort of hear, permission. Exactly. Yeah. And I had all kinds of fears about doing that. And, um, man, I've, I mean, some, I, I don't think I've ever seen such, like, unconditional generosity and kindness. Yeah. So it's been a, it's been a pleasure and an honor. So what are you going to do with all this when you, when you're done? Um, I'm hoping to, so, like I said, been been accruing kind of a lot of audio, a lot of notes, and right now I've 
feel kind of like um, another quick story. There was a big Cajun guy who let me camp out under his trailer right mm -hmm. on the bayou, mm -hmm. and uh, this was in southern Louisiana. And as I was leaving, he said, uh, "You know, really, all you're doing is reading a book just with your feet." You know, so right now I feel like I'm reading the book. And I'm hoping at the end, as I might do in English class, to write the paper on the book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whether that's using the audio or, or actually writing something. Or creating some sort of virtual gallery. Or exactly, going back to something like that. Um, so, yeah, just with, with the intention of further understanding it myself and hopefully sharing it with other people who aren't in a position to do something like this. Sounds like it could be something that you could do on other land masses too, other other yeah. other countries, I'd other regions. Walking to listen, yeah, Africa. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, maybe that'll be the next step. I mean, one concern I would have about that is just the language barrier. But hey, you know, certain languages are universal. Yeah. So, drumming seems to be universal. Yes. Rhythm, food, music, and food. Food and music seem to be yeah, huge. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Universal is kind of a big claim. We don't know how their planets feel. All the, maybe Mars Curiosity, the Curiosity <laughs> rover. In, in well, I don't know, did you see any of the, the Curiosity rover oh, landing on Mars yeah, last yeah, night? Yeah, 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 They sent some pictures back, right? Yeah, I was, I was kind of hoping that there would just be like an eyeball looking back at the <laughs> like, camera, like, or a big sign that says, you know, Yankee, go home. You're not welcome here. Or for sale, sign foreclosure. I thought that would be pretty funny. I loved the reaction. Uh, did you see the reaction of like the... the the, the nerds. The nerds, basically. It's like the, the nerds the nerds go wild, like, dude. Uh, that was totally yeah, there was actually an NPR piece done on the, the tall guy who was the big guy who was pacing back and forth in the oh, really? in the control room. Um, and he's apparently like this rock, this like tech rock star, rock star dude. So. Space. Space dude. Very cool. Yeah. And then a friend of mine actually posted a picture of Facebook today that's actually the, the first picture that they sent back, and it's got Marvin Martian's head superimposed on <laughs> It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, I look forward to uh, seeing you in San Francisco. Yes, I'm so excited. When, when you'll you get be able to the to coast there. and can I dunk yourself awesome. in the Pacific, we yeah. may have to bring you a wetsuit because the water's pretty, <laughs> water's pretty cold. Hard to imagine that right now, where the water in the pool. Is it was 55 and foggy in San Fran what? today. Yeah, the oh. fog 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 rolled in, but by September it's actually the fog should be clearing, so it should okay. be about 75 or so and clear. Yeah. So okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, very excited. Very awesome. excited. All right.